All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Esports Bros TV exhibition match. It's Blue Ringed Octolines versus Rising Moon. I'm Best Team Maker, and with me right now, Mr. Totsley. How are you doing? I'm doing very good, thanks. Good day to all the Australians out there that are staying up rather late if you're uh, <laughs> on the East Coast. Not so late if you're on the West Coast, and very late if you're in New Zealand. It's good to have you on board here watching this amazing lineup for the exhibition match straight up into Splatoon 2. Yeah, we got we got we got a good week to have to play with the game in our hands right now. And we've got this very early meta shaping up between all the players around the world. And a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff happening all sorts all over the place. But right now we oh, have two yeah. teams here at the ready, raring to go each each other's throats here. Blue Ring, Octolines, and Rising Moon, as you know, were two of the teams invited to the E3 Splatoon 2 Invitational, where they also face against Dynamo from Japan and Deadbeat from the NA region. And these two teams were not able to face each other during the final bracket, so we are giving them the chance here to show off their stuff. There is uh, also the slight fact there that both of these teams technically placed third, quote unquote, since they sort of finished in the same point in the brackets. So uh, this will be sort of like a third place show off <laughs> in, some manner, in some manners of speaking. And I'm sure they're raring to sort of prove themselves, especially having a little bit of time with the game this week. Should be very fun to watch. Yep, and here we go. We have our map selection on the screen right now. There will be a total of eight maps played today. We're spanning across all the maps currently available out for Splatoon 2 right now, spanning across three the different ranked modes and if it ever comes to a 4v4 tie we will have a ninth game to decide everything once and for all and you can see here our map and mode combinations and just going back to our teams for a second you know I, let, let's start first with the blue ringed octolines making a splash in the Australian scene and gaining just worldwide fans after their E3 appearance ah uh, yes uh, I certainly know that uh Bro had quite the following um, from Japan uh, during the E3 event. Uh, quite a lot of fan art and support uh, for the Bro, Bro team. Um, since then, I'm not sure how much has happened with the team, but, but it does seem that they all, all are here. I do know that Ladias isn't quite so thrilled with Charger uh, in this game so far, but It'll be interesting to see what happens with the weapon comps and stuff. Yeah. Um, do you know? Have you have you seen Blue Ring Octolines play lately in this last few weeks? Do you have a sense of what they sort of favor in in the first few uh, weeks? Week? Unfortunately, not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a, the only main thing, of course, is um, oh, aside from SpongeBob, of course, he was a, a bit of an NZAP main back in Splatoon 1, and he's quite oh, he, liking the end zap must, in Splatoon 2. He must be so happy about the end zap in Splatoon 2. This is... The, the ink armor on Zap is quite nice indeed. Like, if there ever was like a weapon and a special that fit well together, it's actually, I would say, the end zap and the ink armor, because the end zap has a ridiculous amount of turf coverage that you can do really quickly here, and it just fits so well in getting as many ink armor procs as you can for your team. That and the run speed on the NZAP compared to the other shooters was retained, so it actually has a little bit higher base run speed when firing, which allows it to strafe and what have you in the thick of a fight much easier than most other shooters, especially with some uh, some nice run speed stacking, which is always nice to see. And I think I do. I believe Latias is the Charger player for the Blue Ring Octolines. Have you heard any word on her preferences for Chargers in Splatoon 2? I know there's been a bit of talk about if Chargers are still good or not. There, there has been one that people are liking so far. The Fire Fiend Charger, definitely. Um, that's definitely a very solid kit. It's an excellent balance between defense and offense. You have the wall, the splash wall to protect you and cut, be able to impede the enemy's progress on you or to act defensively whilst you push. And then it has Suction Bomb Rush. And that thing is crazy for covering a lot of turf very quickly or denying it. Um, 
Not to mention, of course, it is still a charger, and if they have grinded out enough levels to get the scoped version, uh, you will be a little bit more in familiar territory with a, just a bit more range. Do you think it's worth um, ever going to the scoped version, considering that it's not, it doesn't hold a charge compared to the unscoped? Which is the new mechanic for chargers in Splatoon 2. Indeed, indeed. Uh, personally, it's a bit of a toss-up. I'm always of the opinion that people should go for whatever weapon they are most comfortable with. So if they prefer scope, they should use scope. If they don't really like, if they prefer it that way. But charge hold has been a very interesting thing I've seen some experimentation with. Cream Fresh, for instance, Brian has been having a lot of fun with charge hold. Uh, um, really? over using the scope. I'm very interested, especially in what Rising Moon sort of think about this, because I, Rising Moon, they didn't get a chance to show their best during the E3 Invitational, but in the recent weeks and the few tournaments that there have been in the early release days of Splatoon 2, they have been on a dominating streak. I believe they went <laughs> nearly defeatless, like undefeated, during the SCL number 42 last week, which was oh, insane. Very interesting. I'm very, I'm very impressed with a lot of the enthusiasm a lot of people have coming into this game, sort of charging headfirst into these tournaments and stuff. Not really for me, because I want to try and set all the test the waters a bit, but it is very nice to see people just go full bore and try and strut their stuff early on. But what I'm, what I'm really happy to see, though, is to see Urza just unleash all unholy terror on the enemy here. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like we're actually almost ready to go. Both sides at the ready, just waiting for um, MF to actually hit the start button. He will be on the for this match. <laughs> yeah, uh, the yeah, spectators have to hit the OK button also, which is yes, hilarious. The spectators do have to ready up as well, <laughs> but perhaps he was giving it some time for the French cast. Who knows? All right, well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is the exhibition match between Blue Ringed Octolings and Rising Moon. And there it is, Latias with the with Fire the Fit unscoped. Charge. And I think I see, is that the Charger, is that the regular spot scoped on the other side? That's a Fire Fin non scoped on the other side. Uh, for some reason, I feel like I called this. <laughs> I mean, it's probably the best. Um, charger kit people have. E leader not very as favored so much with a lot of the recent range nerfs to it in Splatoon 2, so I, I could see it being picked up, but right now, here we go. This is the here we go. first map of the day. It's going to be tower control on the reef here. Tell me, what do you think about the tower control on this map? Or tower control in general? I definitely like the set point change. It's a huge change. I Andy, they're trying to do the old splash wall trick on the tower, but unfortunately failing in the process. <laughs> um, with that said, though, they do seem to have very convincing control here. Um, and unfortunately, the push seems to be snowballing in a sense. Oh, and a nice counter snipe there by Latias. Yep, Latias just denying the inkjet forever taking off from the air and stopping that tower from moving any forward. And the tower having already reached a 30 point marker, so Rising Moon will have that early lead. But tower control in general actually moves a lot faster in this um, in this sequel. It does move faster, ignoring the checkpoints, and the checkpoints are the key here. That once you go to that checkpoint, if you don't have convincing control of that area, your push is your push is finished. But, and as we can see here, the three currently one down here. Yeah, two people on the tower, very convincing control of here, and this might actually be it! Alright now, uh, just uh, pull it! If I don't pull the inkjet, unfortunately, <laughs> we could have stayed on the tower and actually finished it, which was a rather questionable play, but it does look like- OH! What?! Saved by the suction bomb rush that... by Bev! Last minute saves oh, coming out from the Octolines. It's not over quite yet, but unfortunately, Bev won't quite get the ink armor for himself, but the team will have the ink armor proc for them. So they are going to be able to reset the map back to the middle here. And you're currently trying to take up the middle here. Inky is going to take over the tower for Rising Moon, but the rest of the um, Blue Ring Octolines have already made their movements. Ink Stormcloud Ink's also making its way here. here to try and shut them down. They do, they do have armor up as well, though. Um, the Splatling on Brogue also has, the, has deployed their Stingray to try and shut them out. Unfortunately, the roller they're struggling a little bit, but that is 3 to 1 down. Um, 
This will give them a bro Octolings a little bit of breathing space to try and get control back here. Taking out oh another two down as well with the charger out of play. Ladia slowly building up her Ink Storm as well, playing it safe to try and get that control. And we're finally going to see some green on the map for the Blue Ringed Octolings as they'll finally just slowly try to take back their side of the map here. But Rising Moon just still showing a very dominant force. Latia is able to jump out back to base just in time right before the bomb is able to kill her off. It looks very like nice. It. We good, do good, have good panic jump there. sitting on top of the tower. Has oh, it and the roller coming in for the dunk to shut down the push. Binks here pulling out the bomb pitcher, trying to get, maintain his control as the tower moves back. But little does he know that there's someone hiding around the corner, ready to take him out. Right now, the, the fire the... charger providing some nice cover there, the stalling Bev's attempt there to try and take the tower. Urza, though, Urza is so deep in right now, and there's so much space created just from this play right now. And here they go; they're going to try to take the tower, but Urza already on the case, trying to get back. He does miss the shot. So can he? He does. He does manage to finish off the kill on the roll up though, but taking quite a lot of time does take out Bev in the process as well. And this is kind of the kind of play that we love to see from Urza. Urza is a very ballsy kind of frontliner. He always goes in for these kind of trades and wants to always get the kill there, no matter how much it costs him. And he has the Inkjet at the ready for some even more aggressiveness here. Taking out Spongebob once that's, again that's here. Inkjet really at the ready! Unfortunately, um... No one's on the tower. Rising Moon has completely <laughs> forgotten about the tower, which has gone into the middle, and Bro have actually taken the tower! Thank you, Bird. Base invading! Vicky <laughs> Bird all by herself right now, yourself. holding on to that tower, has the baller at the ready here! Oh, the pop man. it to just get some more space for her teammates here to get them onto the nice. tower at the moment. 30 seconds left and in the map though, and gonna be a trade. for the trade on the end zap as well. This is an excellent, excellent counter play right here by Bro Rings Oxley. Rising Moon getting too greedy and blind to the control that they had, but it is only 10 seconds left, and it does look like that they will have this in the bag. And right now, Andy just stepping off the tower, just a little bit careful about the aggressive coming up from Vicky. Vicky hunting for the striker, Vicky. but Andy oh, already making his way to the tower, but he can't get on top of it, but it's going to be too late. No one's on the tower. No one's on the tower. And Rising Moon will take the first game. A very strong showing coming out from Rising Moon, just taking control of basically 75% in the entire map here. Nearly choking out the Blue Ring Doctolines. They were able to make some great plays towards the end there, but oh a my nice 17 kill the, count uh, there for Urza. You can see the uh, who's had a little bit more experience than rank there from the uh, that, that scoreboard there with <laughs> most of Rising Moon already in S+. When the Blue, yeah. Blue, Blue Ridge Octolings struggling to even make S at this point in the game. But it is early days, and it's only been a week. It, it, the game will evolve, and players will evolve with the game. Speaking of uh, we game will here. see indeed. Splat so Zones Moray. We've been talking about this off, off camera, and this is probably <laughs> one of the most decisive maps right now. Moray Towers haven't been redesigned for Splatoon 2, and the Splat Zones move closer to the middle, but maybe a little too close for some people's tastes here. Indeed. Um, for those that don't know, uh, in Splat Zones Moray now, both of the zones are now concentrated in the middle of the stage now. But before, they used to be on each side's side, just under the Overlook snipe. Um, but now they're both in the middle. Now this, this basically means that you have to... This concentrates a lot of the fire in the middle of the map and can also give charges a very nice edge indeed if they are able to not get flanked through the numerous new routes that do exist on this map. Not one of the new additions to this map that were made were the additions of ink grills, which I... F they have been... These ink grills are very nicely placed. Basically what they are, you shoot the little... Uh, little divot circle thing and then what oh. happens it pops out an ink trail that allows you to travel across the ink in the air i don't know what, what it's what very you very that? speedy what would you call that the uh, air surfing <laughs> no, no, the, the little thing that spritz out the ink rails but, but i just called it a ball, ball. <laughs> you shoot the, 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 sphere, the sphere of goodness you yeah. use those ink rails <laughs> 
But, uh, but, but ink grills are very interesting indeed because they have an interesting property where if you hit them with your color, there's actually a good amount of time for, that protects you on that ink grill because anyone chasing you can't go on that ink grill for a little bit. They have to shoot oh, you. Oh, and Andy making it. a very interesting what? change there. Not opting for the fire fin and going for the E leader instead. Very questionable choice. Well, I can understand. I, this is so sort of Andy's off. specialty here back in Splatoon 1 days. This is the kind of sniper that he loves to play with, but uh, he's looking instantly the sniped out. He doesn't save him with Latias getting the nice snipe. Hey, who don't, you know who else also main D later back in Splatoon 1? Latias. Latias. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Case right now, we are going to see the first one point cap there done by. The um, blue ring doctorlings, and this is going to be pretty much the tone of this oh, entire match so far. But Laddie uh -oh. is getting flanked there Sensor. by uh, <laughs> Erasers. There, I just was just saying the ink line on the side there, acting as a nice flank. With that said, but Bev does get off his his uh, ink armor prop, but it does look like that Rising Moon has dominant control here in the center, and he's up and down some beacons in the center as well to try and possibly act as a decoy. Urza yeah, is... here just chilling. Yeah, Urza <laughs> is just waiting for the opportunity. This is a very uh, common striking place. Does, Back in Splatoon 1. No. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yes, get yeah. out. <laughs> the good, correct choice there. Very patiently waits for the ink armor to wear off, but unfortunately gets way too greedy and gets taken out by Latias on the side. Bro yes. now in control, taking a very convincing lead in the center here. So this is the interesting thing about this map we were talking about, like, this this map mode combination more than anything emphasizes so much on controlling the map right after you getting an advantage in your team fights here. As you can see, as soon as you get your fights, it's so easy for you to fill up the zones really quickly here. As you see SpongeBob being taken out, that gives some free space for the Rising Moon players. Urza almost getting that other kill as well, but he's going to have to settle back into the middle of the map and get the zones instead. Indeed. That was two for two, so both teams really couldn't do anything there. Areza being very careful there. Medikuma getting off the splashdown. How and did... Going in how, balls deep How here. is she still alive here? She is finally going to be taken out here, but that is a good amount of time wasted for Rising Moon at the moment, as they still try to recover themselves a little bit on this perch. A Andy here starting to respect Latias here, realizing... Maybe trying to space a little bit more and not getting the clean shots here. And but Latias has been getting Latias has been getting all of the Inkstorm procs. Like all the Inkstorms we see on this map so far have been from Latias. I mean Inkstorms does synergize very well with the E leader here. Cause it, it it basically creates a line of respect that you cannot touch. Like you this line? You went walking through here. Go away! <laughs> Right, and that just synergizes well, but Areza here coming in here. Oh no, the oh, ink nope. line susses him out! Alright, so <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is the new feature of the mines in Splatoon 2 here. They don't do as much damage as before, but they're now basically point sensors all over the map that you don't know where they are. So once you proc them, people will, will be able to find where you are. Indeed, they detonate very, very quickly, and it's very difficult to escape the point sensor proc. Uh, and it it's tussle here. Made Unfortunately, not getting the kill there on Arresta, doing some good work here, putting pressure on, but not being able to really make a lot of it. No, Does the enough to get the escape time here. He, he was looking oh, to oh. get the kill for the jump in, but not quite yet. He's ducking and dodging move. around, but Pinkie Bird won't be able to pick up the trade! Nice smack! Nice smack! But it's still not looking good for the... For the Octolines right now, they're still losing a lot of time as Rising Moon's ticker is still counting down right now. Already past the 20 point marker. Inky just all First. over the place, gonna get the tray with Bicky Bird. The respect and that timer is out, giving still them going space. down. Will it be enough? Unfortunately, no. Rising Moon do take game two. And right now, like I said, Rising Moon, they're the hot stuff right now. This team has been grinding out so many games at this point, and they're just looking so good at this moment. Yeah, oh my, yeah, they are all S+. Plus. <laughs> yeah, Urza is a monster, I have to say, on this map, just because he has a very good sense of um, map control. He knows where to take his um, really risky plays, but they don't really seem too risky because he, he's always getting kills out of them. And they're indeed. always two, two, two for one trades, three for one trades, and indeed, because of that, indeed. they give so much space to the rest of the Rising Moon players. The other thing that Razor is doing very nicely, he has a lot of patience 
We saw him there earlier camping out the wall on the side of the main snipe there. I didn't quite actually get the right painting on the wall to climb up when he wanted to, but he played the patience game and that that paid off for him in the end. And he, knowing when to engage and when to back off is absolutely critical now, now that kills and deaths mean so much more in this game. And blue ring Auckland's have to be on a real watch out now because every time Latias gets cornered out and taken out, that's a lot of their map control just gone from the game. Mm. Indeed. I do see Latias with the Imperius tag, that's interesting. Did she join that team recently or is this some... I'm not really uh, sure. Ah, yes, um, that is uh, a little bit of announcement that was on Twitter that Latias has now joined Team Imperius. A very nice Along catch for FLC's uh, team. Yeah. And a few other people. Alright, well, right now still playing play for, for... Still play playing for the Thrills. Yep. For, for this uh, exhibition match, for the spirit of fairness and sportsmanship, so that's very nice. Alright, so we have Rainmaker on the Starfish main stage. Rainmaker has also changed for the sequel. You know, what, what are these big changes to the Rainmaker? So, the biggest change to the Rainmaker is actually the shot itself. So, in Splatoon 1, you used to charge it up and it fired a giant tornado of death that didn't really ink well in front of you, but could be used to really have a strong offensive presence or defensive presence to keep people away. Now it shoots like a supercharged blaster shot that explodes only wherever it lands. It reminds uh, me a lot of a grenade, grenade launcher, is what it is. <laughs> it is a little bit of a grenade launcher in that sense, but it does paint very nicely at full charge. The other thing, of course, is that if no one touches the fish for 15 seconds, it automatically resets back to the center. Which, which one of the problems with the Rainmaker before was just camping out that Rainmaker when you had uh, yeah. advantage. And right now, you have to defend it for the entire map here. We okay, see some... so Marias busting out the fire feed yep. charger. The scope, um, very nice. We are going to see Indeed. some adjustments made from both sides here. We do see that uh, Blue Rain Octolines have gone for a more range approach here. We see them picking up the heavy splat. Marias getting the pop on the fish straight up the bat, getting that nice inking control in the center of the stage. And right now, just keeping a good eye on the um, Rainmaker, making sure that no one's going to be able to pick it up. It does have the Suction Bomb Blast at the ready here. And the Suction launch. Bomb Rush is coming out to try and deny the center. Alright, we have uh, Sabo. Sabo. Sabo, the Master Blaster player on the side of Rising Moon, going to also be able to activate the um, Inkjet in time here to try to push people out. But... Oh, unfortunately, Ooh. getting taken out by Bicky Bird's beautiful mid-air swing once again. Bro here, looking like they're gaining a good control here in the center. So the nice, the really nice thing about this map, it's a lot flatter here. So this doesn't allow them to try to take as much territory as they can here. But it's going to be a three-man wipe on their side. So Bro's unfortunately feeling the pressure. Fourth one down in the form of Latias going down to Inky, holding on to the ends up, getting the kill through the gratings. They are going to be able to stop that Rainmaker right at the 15-point marker. So a huge push indeed for Rising Moon. That's very, very strong. Super early on. It all is Oh, boy. Main stage has almost like Black Belly skate park vibes with the snowball momentum that you can have. They are keeping oh, it down very nicely. <laughs> Marius getting the saving spot there just as he was going for the dunk there. It's the knock it bro are not giving up here without a fight. It is with how quickly Rising Moon were able to get that swing, it is still anyone's game. Inky's movement across the map is just amazing right now. He's getting out of the way when he needs to, building up the ink charge needed. He's already almost there for the ink armor. Ink armor, which has been basically the best special so far in Splatoon 2 right now, providing you that one hit defense needed oh. for these team fights. Protecting her from uh, attacks Bird like Bird. that, getting the kill win against Vicky Bird as well. Inky is just winning these the fights fish left and right. He's resetting and it's out of there. Alright. That will, that will buy bros some time to regain some control of their base. Andy going back to try and pop the fish, firing off his missiles before he picks it up. Very nice play. Yeah, just making sure that he's able to just push them out, zone them out of the area. But Vicky Bird, oh, right on the case! Bird coming <laughs> in again with the swipe of death. Doing some excellent work indeed. Ariza coming in with the steam roll. There, Bear popping off his ink armor, unfortunately with most of his team down, so it was a fairly inefficient proc there. He's, he's waiting here. He wants to try to wait for them to pick up the Rainmaker to get the kill on them easily, but right now it's a little yeah. bit hard for him to contest and that he position. Knows. Now he, he has to go right now. Oh, well, too late. 
<laughs> it was not enough. Deciding to opt for the left instead of going straight ahead for the right to shut them down, and that is another game to Rising Moon. You know, there's a point where you can be a little bit too patient in, in moments like this. You see the Rainmaker right in front of you, but you're waiting to get a <laughs> kill, but all of a sudden, you get zoned out by a bomb, and your opportunity just goes away. And currently, Rising Vicky Moon... Bird really doing some work. So, right now, Blue Rain Noctilene's a little bit on the back right now. Currently, 0-3 <laughs> <laughs> against Rising Moon. Mm. <laughs> We're all... Will it play it to all eight games, regardless of I the score? I believe so. I believe it will go to all eight games. Is the is the thing? So there could be a chance for them to come back in the second half of this event. Reverse right sweep. Uh, I but, mean, Bro Bro have pulled off some feats before. Like there, there was the uh, the defeat that they managed to take on Deadbeat in the Turf War. So back in the E3 Invitational. So nothing is out of their league. If they if they can go toe to toe with some of the best, then they don't don't cut them out. Not at all. And right now we have another game coming up underway. It's going to be on Tower Control Inkblot Academy, Inkblot Art Academy. Oh boy, the most pre the prestigious of academies here in Inkopolis. For turf war. <laughs> oh. No, the I. Center I I think it's an interesting <laughs> stage. I think compared to most other maps, this is probably the most closed map, possibly, in terms of the pathway the tower takes. I haven't personally seen tower control on this map before, but I do. I have played a lot of Academy, and the center is absolutely critical. If you can get something long range on the center, it can act as an excellent pressure against the enemy's balcony on their side to really suppress that that balcony floor there overlooking overlooking the center and keeping them away from gaining any foothold for a push. Yeah, I'm, it's going to be very interesting to see um, what Blue Ring Darklings do for this map. And it's probably going to depend on what kind of weapon Matikuma decides to pick up for the team. It seems the other players have found um, their role here and we're just sort of like trying to see what they want to do on this map for sure. And mm, mm. it's like we are counting down right now. Here we go, game number four. And I have a feeling is uh, this. So I've been seeing Sabo play a lot of Octobrush in this game currently. Mm. Octobrush being very good in this game currently has increased range from Splatoon One and a lot more, a few, a few more bits of power there. Ooh, he's gonna go blaster, busting out the Rapid Blaster, and of course, good call there by Sabu as well, pulling out his blast, his custom blaster. Yep, Rapid Blaster Both now teams very good pick. very nicely into the center. Latias already set up, hiding behind this block, trying to put pressure. Now they already see Supporting one person, Urza already on the attack right now, taking out two members of the Blue Wing Doctrines already. And now they're just going to charge on and on the slope, try to pressure out Latias as much as they can here. Prevent Latias from taking control over the middle of the map here. Ricky Bird putting in some work there with the roller flank, unfortunately being taken out. And Latias is also down. Oh no, I know that's the other charge, my bad. I'm getting yeah. the teams mucked up. <laughs> this is this is really scary. This is really bad for Blue Ring Octoling. Like, you do not ever want. Urza in this position. He is so high no. up on the perch, he is just waiting for you to come down into the middle of the map. That is a loss of control that was been seized by Rising Moon very quickly. And that's a very scary thing about this map. Most of the map design here in the in the um in Splatoon 2 has been about finding multiple pathways from your spawn oh, into the middle of the map here, but once it gets a delayed kill there, but unfortunately Urza does get too greedy and taken down by Latias. And that was another rather awkward delay kill there by the scope. <laughs> I mean, this, this is sort of well. This is sort of the thing about this map is that when you have this much control here, it's just so hard to actually get back into the middle of the map here. We are going to see Vicky Bird try to find her way around, but it's not going to be quite enough uh, yeah. yet. They're still controlling the middle of the map right now, and Rising Moon just riding that tower all the way to victory. And Game Four comes to a quick conclusion. <laughs> the squid is uh, having He's a little bit of uh, problems today. To He's deciding if he wants to stay on the tower or not. You know, a little tired. Very dominant control there by Rising Moon, taking control of the center and and again taking that balcony, which is so critical in maintaining control and not getting flattened. Unfortunately, a fairly one-sided game in that sense, with Bro not having a lot of options there to retaliate. 
The sheer combo of Urza and Sabo on the front lines is frightening. You, you give them any, you give them any bit of room, and they will take advantage of it as much as they can. They will take more room away from you if need be. <laughs> Bicky Bird here in the English chat here saying this is why we should have done it on the weekend of release. Feeling perhaps a bit of remorse that Rising Moon <laughs> have been playing, have basically Non-stop. been no lifing this game. I mean, it's, it's clear. Week. It is very clear they've been doing that, and it's showing in their gameplay right now. They have a very strong understanding of controlling the map. Like, in that last game, you just if you get stuck up on that perch, that's it. Getting down from those perch is really hard, especially if you're playing against a blaster. I do have to say that I I don't fault the use of the Rapid Blaster, because Rapid Blaster is quite nice on Academy, but the overall team comp on Bro was very weak on the turf capacity side. There's also there no real very... frontliner. Like, who'd you go to toe-to-toe against um, Urza? The only answer was Bicky Bird, but Bicky Bird just kept getting caught out in the middle of the map here, especially by Inky. SpongeBob is sticking with the end zap. Which is which can act as a nice frontliner if especially if you go two by twos. But it's just like once they had lost control, like there was no real way for them to claim it back. I mean even if Ladias had gone for the Firefin Charger or the Firefin Scope for the Bomb Rush, like Suction Rush is still a beast. Like it, it can just claim a lot of turf very quickly. I mean and every, that every single game you play is something. A- Every single game you play is a turf war map because so much of it is just about map control. You need to get that space for your team to be able to move around easily, get their specials mm. up, get their mm. um, flanking mm. positions up. But and you can see Absolutely. just that is just the way that Rainmaker, that um, Rising Moon have been playing so well for. And right now, backs against the wall for Blue Ring Doctolings as we head into the second half of this exhibition already. It's going to be Rainmaker and the Humpback Pump Track. Ooh, this will be a fun one. Now, humpback pump track. So is it just me, or is the Rainmaker path for this map really small in comparison to what we usually well, see? Well, I mean, it can't, it can't be much worse than the <laughs> main stage, right? <laughs> it feels really short. Well, main stage, it has that weird... You have to take, like, a weird, awkward pathway around some of the barriers. It go up and then down, up and then down. But, like, here, it's just, like, you just ride up a few slopes and you're there. It's almost like Black Belly Skate Park Rainmaker, the sequel. <laughs> Very reminiscent of Black Belly, yes. And with that, I'm, I'm, it's going to be very interesting to see what either team's going to bring to this. Like we were saying, Blue Ring Octolines need to find some way to get some map control. They're not winning these fights outright, so they, no. need, to, they need to find some way to get control. Contr- map, map control and pressure. But Rapid Blaster, again, is not a bad choice because it's a good zoner tool. But if you're going to have a zoner on your team, you need something that can just lay down the ink. So it will be very interesting to see how they respond in this second half of this set. Alright, here we go. Game number five right now. Rising Moon currently sweeping the scoreboard clean. They see the other side and they're ready to take it down. Maddie Kuma busting out the pro and Maddie S switching to the fire fin. Alright. So yep. we have the Splattershot Pro at the ready here, and I think it's a very good weapon for this mode, and definitely. You get the point sensor, which allows you to find out where your opponents are. Already here, we're going to see the fight here. Urza, 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 already! Urza! Jump on SpongeBob for a nice early kill, gaining control of one of the sides of Bro's base. The Rainmaker now in possession. This might be over <laughs> very quickly. Every game you, you play against Rising Moon, you have to assume Urza is right be, right there. Yeah. Just like that. And, and he is already on the nice other side of the map. He is Urza chasing them so from nice behind! Gun. The fish is here getting control here, but... Oh, nice. They do manage to get the kill and... Taking their time here, going for the dunk. He, he does look like he's coming for the dunk here. And it. it's over. The bomb just badly timed, it would have gone off if it was just a second longer. But that was a very quick match indeed. Yep, like I said, just up, up a few slopes and you're there with the Rainmaker and... Like I said, you have to play every single game now as if Urza is right below you. Oh, yeah. You need yeah, to be that, that... very aware of his positioning right now or else he will overrun you like that. Bloody hell, that was... 
like, I saw that opening there, and it was a very nice spectator work managing to catch that as well. It was actually a two-man run-up on the left side for Rising Moon with Eriza as well. Like, one was support, and Eriza just going in ham. Look at that. About very, that. very convincing. The first 10 seconds of the match looked good. They got map control on the other side of the map, but they just didn't account for how much Urza would do to them afterwards. Indeed. Urza is honestly the key here to Rising Moon's game plan. If he dies, or if he makes a mistake, I do feel like Rising Moon's entire game plan starts falling apart. Like, he, he is their dedicated slayer and pressurer, and it's not a splatter shot, like, it's the gun, the gun. Like, <laughs> you, you can just do, it's an extremely versatile weapon, especially in Splatoon 2. And, and we are, we're, we're gonna move to making a, it work. We're moving to another <laughs> map where hiding in those little corners, finding those opportunities to attack your opponent's backside. Muscle Forge Fitness will be the next map, and lots of valleys and little hiding ways for people to hide here. Indeed. But also a lot of a lot of sort of perches and elevated spots where you can get a, a bit of a height advantage, which would be nice for Latias, um, both on the defense and the offense. Um, but also to try and mix things up, um, there were certainly a lot, a lot of nice uh, perches and and different elevations within the center of the pyramid. So it will be very interesting to see how people play around these in this match, especially since the zone is in the center. Urza making a last minute change, it looks like. We'll see, we'll have to find out and see. Here we go, game number six right now. Rising Moon just looking dominant in this game so far. And here we go, it's gonna be zones on Muscle Forge Fitness. One big fat zone for both sides to contend with. Let's see. Marius ditching the sniper and going yeah. for the tri slusher. Sebu yeah, ditching there it is. the regular bluster and going for the clash and a mini splatling also All right. coming so out on Rising Moon. So, okay, here's the thing about this map. This map is a bucket map for sure. They're, the height <laughs> is just perfect for the range of the bucket here. Sabo is just trapped here oh, for sure. Matty Kuma nice keeping an eye on him very nicely. And this is the kind of pressure that Blue Ring Onklings are need to make here. They've even been able to find Urza in the back line somehow too, so now they're just going to be storming their way already with the first 20 point lead on the zone right now, trying to avoid the Tenta Missiles as much as they can. Madikuma a little oh, too close to one though. Picky Bird, you unfortunately. Take out Madikuma's pressure. Vicky Bird was unfortunately a little bit too close to her when she was passing on by, so the prop was right there. And Sabo just going along with the Clash Blaster, one of the new weapons of Splatoon 2 right now. Very fast fire rate of a blaster here, and it seems he's having a lot of fun with it. Very fast fire rate, but not a lot of range and not a lot of kill power. So if you can space that thing well, it ain't doing anything. Vicky Bird trying to do some good work in the middle, but unfortunately getting blasted as Areza just... Last oh no, Latias stuck in the corner there, taken out by Urza. Urza going after another one, trying to get oh. Madikuma on the fall, but not quite yet there. Yeah, Urza maybe getting a little too greedy. Yes, he does get punished with Medikuma being very mindful of his presence. They need to get to that zone right now. There's only out. there's only 20 more points left for them to try to contest here right now. Andy pouring up a lot of ink. Madikuma has the Stingray at the ready, but has to back up for the time being. The timer's still going to go down at the 10 point mark. They need to get the cap right now, or at least stop the timer. But there's too many and people dying on the zone right now. But it's and that's, enough. that's and game. Alright. <sighs> The change to the tri slosher was a very um, meta choice, I would have to say. It's a, one of the most common weapons we see currently in this last week of Splatoon 2, but... Man, the pressure coming fair, out from Rising Moon. To be fair, though, the ink armor that they did manage to get up did save a few of their teammates quite a bit uh, during those engagements earlier. I saw the Clash Blaster there. Struggling to get the kill on SpongeBob because of the armor, just blocking that extra shot. So it, I wouldn't say it was necessarily a bad choice. Uh, and Tri Slusher is also good for just painting, like it because of the increased spread on the oh, yeah. the two slushes on the side. It's very nice at painting. And so it, it looks really good for. For bros in the first minute of the match they got the kills they got the first cap of this they finally touched the objective so they were mm. able to do something to begin the game but it just fell apart i think it happened right when madakuma just lost control of the map yep. died to the tenta missile unfortunately just got too close to her teammates tenta missile targeting and 
from there, there were just there was just no control for I, the blue ring. To be fair, I actually think that was Bicky Bird. Yeah. Uh, trying to escape her missiles and unfortunately dragging the missile target too close to Maddie, trying to run away. Um, well, Maddie wasn't running. Dying well, to the splash. <laughs> so Maddie escaped all of her missiles. But then the last one from Becky Bird's missile launch. Yeah, and I was like, oh no. That that was uh, that was a definitely uh, a momentum changer there with uh, Maddie dying there because that splatling was oppressive. Really yes. keeping Rising Moon out and stopping them from really being able to do anything. Um, but once Ma Maddie died, that was where things just changed. And right now, we're going to move on to our next map here, Tower Control Port Macro. Port Macro, another returning map with some new changes here. It is now a much better map, I feel. Do you? It is no longer three lanes, the map. It is now mm -hmm. an actual map. It's more like... Yeah, I, I, basically, the, the lanes are still kind of there, but there's a huge amount of space. There's a lot more. There's so much more space right now. It's like not only is that there's space, there is actual verticality in the middle of the map that you can take advantage oh, of. Oh yes, like no, that is not, I, one of the key things got, that was needed. You now have some paintable crates in the center, so you can actually paint the top, the surfaces on top. There are and there are also that you, sponges. Yeah, yes, that allow you to get up platforms that are a little bit out of reach, but blowing up the sponges allows you to climb. And this is. A very nice. I think everyone is in agreement that this is probably one of the best redesigns of an old map. Oh, absolutely! It was very, very stally and very campy. Like it, but back in the day, it wasn't uncommon to on splat zones to basically the, have five minutes do, of do no one camping. Days, <laughs> do you remember the days of the quad wall composition? Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it got. That's how bad it went. Look how look how wide this map is much more now. How much more space there is. I like that. Oh, definitely. Ladias, how it's going to go back to the Firefin scope with Rise of the Moon busting out the Clash Blaster, the Pro, and the Rapid. A lot of range here, but not helping Cebu there. Getting done by Bicky Bird. Well, Bicky Bird, Bicky Bird on this... fire here. And this is the kind of map this new Port Macro was designed for. Lots of flanking potential for this roller. Lots of room for her to just move around the map. The Inkstorm is going to go down from Rising Moon trying to block their path, but it is going to slowly pass away. And Bicky Bird just trying to conquer as much of the map as he can, getting the trade on Urza. Trade on Urza, though. That's big. And Sabo just trying to chase them down, but this is the kind of this is the kind of play that they need to be making right now. But we are going to see Rising Moon gaining a lot of map control for themselves, just trying to push on in towards the other side of the map. The push, though, because of the suction bomber, Sabo responding in turn with his Stingray, and unfortunately, Bro pulling out the Stingray of their own to try and counts. Like this is this is frantic. Right, Stingray. I think Stingray is one of those really weird specials in this game where it just doesn't feel that. Oh my God! How? Did, what? A beautiful mini snipe by Ladias on the what? on the inkjet and Bicky Bird responding in turn, punishing Rising Moon's push, gaining and control of the center, and the ball are coming out to oh. the press. Bros are in, bros are in the lead. They are in the lead right now by one just point, but it's a, a lead. For the yes, we are, we are seeing they... Binks trying to work his way around the map here, trying to get on top of the tower as much as he can. Won't be able to get the final prop of the kill quite yet, though. Just still trying to push his way into the map, but he is oh, going to be hit around the corner. The oh my I god! Double kill! Beautiful! Oh, no! The two! No! The what? The kill! The vertical oh, swipe! Huge play by Binks! Over the third. container, slapping Earth Sabo in the face, and now Bros take the lead away from Rising Moon. Once again, Bicky Bird putting in some serious work. Things are looking good for them. Rising Moon are on the counter attack once again, getting a few key kills, and now they're going to try to take some map control away. They're going to grab the lead away from the here. Doctors here. The oh, no. unfortunately blocking him. And uh, 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 Sponge oh. Bear going for the nice defense, using the sponge to protect him. Very nice play. And they're still getting the kills right now. SpongeBob just stuck in the corner right now. Urza trying to pressure him in with the bombs at the moment, and Urza's in the middle of their of their opponent's side of the map here, which is again a great position from Urza. Not good for the Blue Octolings catching SpongeBob on the side here. Now going to be trying hitting Matakuma by the last proc, that last hit oh. of his gun. With that, unfortunately, though, despite his effort, oh here, no, he's <laughs> punished by Bicky Bird. Okay, despite, I was about to say, despite his efforts. 
Rising Moon were three down despite his efforts. Uh, and getting punished by Bicky Bird in the process is just a nice finisher. And the baller is at the play here, although he is gonna, she is going to be hit by the point sensor, so not looking good for them. Just going to use that time to rack up the baller here, get some space for her team. And I that think was they actually three a man very right. nice responsive play. Oh, could this be it? Urza on the sidelines uh, here, trying to see how much he can, but the incoming is going to be up! Four bully Doctor Luzer, they're going to be oh, taking the wooden knights! It's coming! Inking trying to attack them from the sidelines, but Lurie Doctor is oh, reaching the checkpoint. Sticky. They're no. one point away from it's contesting it's the it's lead, it's and it's now it. they get it's the it. lead! They've got it! Vicky Bird going in, going ham with the hamster. Um, and this, <laughs> this is the kind of play they need. This map is so wide and open, but there's so many corners that Vicky Bird can just use to take advantage of with her plays right now. Taking advantage of both the vertical and the horizontal here. Madakuma now on the front lines trying to see if we block the path of the tower here. While Urza launches that inkjet into the air trying to chase them down. But not uh, finding it quite yet. Gets the kill onto Madakuma. Madakuma's doing so much work there. Sponge may have tried to get away but being punished by Urza. Mickey Bird put, trying to put in some work, but unfortunately that is control All right. of Rose's side here. And Last 40 seconds here. What can what can Blue Ring Ducklings do? Urza already in the back lines right now, sitting on top of the side perch here. Bicky Bird trying to contest them, but they also take the lead away from the Blue Ring Ducklings now. They are going to be able to take out Urza, but it's three man down on the side of Blue Ring Ducklings. Ah, uh, this might... Uh, this does not look good now. They do still have one more checkpoint to go, but Bit. But Binks they're getting an excellent kill. Now they're missing Bicky Bird, but trading there. You can't Bicky take Bird trades here. Flat. This is the last few t seconds of the match here. Urza just holding on to the tower for the That's last few ticks of it. On, bro. They will not Pushing be able it to forward. That. that is game. They can't reach it. It's too late. They were so close. That so was... close. <laughs> that really was more of the play we wanted to see from Bro. That was an incredible performance. Despite the loss, Vicky Bird just going in ham. Look, look at that. 18 splat assists. Like, that, that was truly incredible. She was putting in massive work there. Despite the fact that the, what, the center was widened, it was simply not enough to protect those flanks. Yeah, a little unfortunate that roller. there. They... It's, it just all comes back to turf control, Rising Moon just taking control of the map so quickly anytime they get an advantage here. And that just mm. has been the key to their success. Anytime they get a kill, map control is theirs. Anytime they get an objective, map control is theirs. And right I now, mean, we're credit, going to... To, credit to Bro though for I mean, coming this far and some really crushing defeats as well, but going toe to toe in that game, that's really more of what we want to see. And right now we are in the final map here for this exhibition. I believe there will be a few more matches after this. A bit of a mixer between the two teams. But this is the final Bro versus Rising Moon matchup for the day. And it's going to be on Rainmaker Sturgeon Shipyard. Oh boy. This is a, one of the new maps of this game. This is probably one of the most interesting maps I've seen designed. In that it, the landscape keeps constantly changing in the middle of the map. Mm-hmm. So... There are numerous bridges throughout the stage, one close to your base and two in the center, where they will regularly change their position from being either up or down. So sometimes they're flat and they give you much more movement on the ground, whilst other times they turn into walls, which allows you to get towards the, the perches on the enemy team's base or on your side for the enemy as well. And that can constantly change your movement, particularly in the center of the map. But Rainmaker, whoo, Rainmaker is very good. There is a box in the center that you can use to jump over yeah. onto a, uh, the snipe on the far, on the far it's left a, side. It's a, it's a tough jump if you're under pressure, but if they, again, oh, yeah. Moon can get that pressure, that is a big, big win for them right now. And here we go, if, into if the map. If you make that jump, that's basically 56 points free. Alright, here we go. Sabo switching off to the tri at this time. No more blasters for him. Instead, it's going to be um, Binks that's going to be on their blaster, it looks like. They're going to be trading spots a little bit, it seems. 
for this map. Yeah, Andy busting out the fire in scope and Ladias going back to the E leader. Just right now, just trying to target the middle of the map here. Trying right to get are. a good snipe here, but unfortunately not able to help out SpongeBob there. Oh, it has to be, oh, Latias has to be very careful right now. They're already the holding it on her position. Jumps out immediately! Out, knowing, knowing the future that is about to come here. And of course, Vince there making that jump. There it is! Right there! Continues. They're coming oh, right up there. Oh, 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 the section bomb! The section bomb! Section <laughs> and it shuts it down! Oh, he is a little too... Too, too gutsy there, but he was. they were able to get the kill on top of him, but once again, a very strong early lead by Rising Moon there. Coming up on the side of uh, Rising Moon as well. And Sabo with the ink armor. armor just stops Picky Bird from getting ki get, um, killing him right now, and Rising Moon just all over their opponent's side of the map. It doesn't really matter at this point because Bro managing to stall it out long enough to reset the fish back to the center, no, so now still... Rising Moon have to bring it all the way back. The Stingray is deployed, putting the pressure on the fish, trying to keep him away. They just need it. How do they approach this though? It's such it's in the corner that they literally cannot reach into very safely here. Bicky Bird gonna get denied that position as well. Here they go, going go for the oh! dunk, and that's game. Oh Damn. no. That Again, Rising Moon with the dominant control of the entire map. Not the entire that, map, that... but in the in the area that mattered here. On oh, the yeah, left yeah, side. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, sadly, that is an absolute domination. Yep, the finish. <laughs> Rising Moon. <laughs> There's not much else to say. Rising Moon with the eight and zero against Blue Ring Octolines, constantly with the just dominating performance in each of these maps right now, and they've been playing this game a lot ever since it came out. Oh, I, I don't doubt it, but um. <laughs> As I said, it's very early days, uh, it, despite the fact that that was quite convincingly in Rising Moon's favor for most of those games. Like, it's week one. Like, And there were, there were moments, there were moments that the oh, audience yeah. understood what they needed to do. They found the positioning they needed in order to um, flank out Rising Moon, prevent them from getting that map control, and just pushing them out of, into a bad position. But right now, Rising Moon, they're looking pretty darn good. Oh yeah, definitely. But They're looking pretty darn good. For Bro for Blue Ring Doctor Things though, I I mean, it did seem pretty crushing, but again, it's one week. Like, there is a huge future ahead for this game, and there is plenty of time to play, to improve, to go into those leagues, to play those PBs. Well, okay, that's actually another story with the matchmaking. You kind of basically end up playing scrims in league after a certain point anyway. Um, <laughs> um, against all the good teams, uh, with the way the matchmaking regionalizes. But, <laughs> like, th there is plenty of time for people to stick together in teams, to play more games, to, uh, to learn the nuances of their weapons, of the maps, uh, in the different modes, and give some of these top players a run for their money. Now, once again, guys, give a shout out to all the players that were in this map here Blue Ring, Dr. Leans, and Rising Moon. The players in full force right now, they've played very well, but Rising Moon looking just doing really well today. I think there's Indeed. little doubt Indeed. about that. They're, just they, are, they are the team to watch out for in the future days as Platoon 2 competitive. Well, I mean, let, let's be let's be fair here. Like that, they they were good enough to be able to take out to take the cup in ESL for Splatoon oh, One yeah. to be able to go to the E3 Invitational in the first place. So I mean, there's been no question about their capacity and ability to perform well in Splatoon, and they are proving it once again in in Splatoon Two as well with a. Uh, very con <laughs> very convincing performance. Right. And with that, I believe that ends the festivities for today right now. As Rising Moon have taken their victory. They're going to have some fun doing some mixers. But I think that we are done here on our end. Mr. Toad, where can people find you on the interwebs? Me? Um, Twitter, obviously. 
Um, I have an underscore for some reason because usernames are weird. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so on Twitter is Tozilli underscore T, and as Twitch as well, also Tozilli underscore T, and the various Discords. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm Best Team Maker. You can find me on my Twitch stream, Best Team Maker, my Twitter at the Best Team Maker. Everything Best Team Maker. Just find, <laughs> any, type it in Google, you'll probably the, see me the there. Best, you, you, you make the best tea. I make the best tea. <laughs> I'm currently just subsisting on a bunch of caffeine right now. It is like 3 a.m. for me at the moment here. I'm living in between both worlds of Australia and Europe. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm. Well, on one hand, maybe you're thankful that this didn't go on for too long compared to most <laughs> I, I have a 9 a.m. cast I have to go for as well. So this is going to be a fun few hours of well, sleep. Well, I mean, you know, standard tournament, four or five hours, go. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys very much for coming by. We'll see you. Splatoon 2 Competitive is looking very good right now. We'll see you guys later for some more future events. We'll catch ah, yes. you guys Before later. Before we do go, shout oh, out yeah. to our spectator cam today, doing excellent work for such complex controls. Thank you very much for giving us that perspective. And thank you to Esport Bros for having us on here for the English cast. Yep, Mr. Emmeth of Esports Bros TV, handling camera controls here. Thank you very much. For that wonderful, wonderful series here, organizing all this between the two teams. But for now, we must say goodbye. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys next time. Take care, stay fresh, and stay off the hook.